Okay, great. Okay, I hope everybody can see me. I've been having issues with YouTube again, as usual. It's like it's getting, the bigger it gets, the more problems it gets, the, the worse it gets. So, hi Madnats, hi Kim, hi Kelsey, hi Hirasuna, hi Beth, hi Karen, hi Janine. So, let's uh, go ahead and do some summer mokume gane. I've been out in the garden, I'm still trying to catch up on weeding and cutting and trimming and mowing. I mean, it's crazy how much a garden can grow from one day to the next. I mean, I'm trying to thin down my uh, trumpet vines and I discovered this morning that I have one on one of the posts on my front porch. It had grown since Saturday evening about close to four feet. So there was some stuff that was out. Anyway, hi Wendy, hi Francis. So um, <coughs> we are going to do what? The, oh, it's here. As I was saying, we are going to do a freeform mokumegane that's summer uh, themed and a uh, stamped mokumegane. And for the stamp, you don't really have to use uh, anything that is absolutely and especially recommended. I do have quite a bit of uh, stamps. Let me get to my Amazon influencer store. So that we can look together. Okay, too many tabs. All right. So, let's get on it. So, if we go on the stamps, go and try to find the stamps, because as you can see, I have a whole bunch of stuff here. And I spend quite a bit of time to keep them updated. Okay, I guess I just went past them stamps there we go uh, if you don't already have some you can use something like this like the second one to the right um, anything that's flowery or even butterfly-ish you can use butterfly -ish stuff the one that I'm going to use is this I don't know how to pronounce it, it but it's it's the dark pink one purple one this is what I'm going to use and it's got some uh, floral arabesque and uh, also feathers so that's what's going to be used in the stamped one and let's get back to the normal one I have here I know you can see it's a not very usual color of pearlescent. Uh, this one you can get by um, mixing about two parts of white pearl primo. Hi Sonia, two pi parts of white pearl, uh, one part of uh, sunset pearl and about half a part of uh, cadmium yellow. And you just mix them together nicely and this is what you're going to get and then the second thing that I'm going to use is so this is a free form okay is the the white 
and I want something that's about the same size you don't have to be super duper exact and this is one of the easiest mokumegane uh, things and then the other thing that I'm going to use is some black and because I want to use the black in a very, very thin, um, so these are both on the thickest setting on my makings, I'm going to do the same width or height, however you want to get it, but I'm going to use half of it and out of this I'm going to get two sheets because one will go on top of the white and one will go on top of this orangish pearlescent so let me get it through the machine first place and you want to kind of stretch it as much as you can I'm going to place the orange and then I'm going to place the white which is almost exactly how I want it and the first thing that you need to do is to make sure that it is well stuck in place yeah and this is uh, what I call the butterfly Mokumegane, the butterfly cut. I've, I think I've shown something like this before, but I'm not sure if it was on a public live or if it was on a sponsor's. Yeah, it's an ap apricot, pretty much. All right, then these go stuck one on top of the other and it doesn't really matter which of them you put on top because it's going to be the exact same thing and then I go with them through the pasta machine on the thicker setting and go ahead and restack go back through the pasta machine and restack and one more time through the pasta machine and it will be the black will become almost transparent all right so Oh god, I started saying all right. There's a there's an artist I've watched craft her more like it. I've watched her 
and I'm going to so you, you saw I cut I stacked once and then I'm going to cut in half and stack one more time and then stack it again so pretty much this is how it's supposed to look like yeah I was saying there's a crafter who does tutorials and she's got this habit of saying or write almost every phrase and actually stopped watching whatever she was doing partially because of that anyway so you want to get um, just a little bit more uh, a flattening just so you get a larger um, surface but now be very very careful with what I'm going to show you and I think I need a larger circle just a second so all I'm going to use for this is my blade a round cutter and a toothpick all right again all right <laughs> okay <laughs> okay better than all right so let's go ahead and do the first cut and this is um, important how you do it and you'll see why so the first thing is going to be the round cutter and I'm going to use the um, dull side the blunt side so that I can grab more okay hi Bernadette and let me use an acrylic block for this because otherwise it's going to kill my fingers and also the other good thing to do is to kind of divide in three eyeballing divide in three your stack and make the farthest part of the round cutter kind of like at one third from the edge okay and then press and we go back to it now what I'm going to do is to take my blade and this is um, again quite important using the dull side and what I'm going to do I'm going to do cuts like this so starting from a center all pretty much like rays but the thing that you need to do is to kind of go in when you do the cut so make sure that it's well stuck together and and you can do this with all kinds of other colors your main thing is to have uh, to get this effect you will uh, have to keep the pearl white and the black that's the main thing all right so going in You don't want to do them too close to each other. So again, going in. And I'm always going towards this center. this is pretty much what we get now for the last as I said the third thing is the toothpick
and you have to put it here <coughs> only in this area and in one make kind of like three or four together in the other ones kind of go trying to make a line and this is pretty much all the deformation that we need and all we do now is to kind of get it back together cubify it and once it gets baked you can resin it or you can simply um, sand and um, buff it it doesn't really matter and let me grab some earring cutters and I think that these are the best and I'm actually going to show you a little trick so as I'm cutting my I'm going to cut it about a three millimeters maybe even towards four so let me see if I go one two three four let me go even thicker than that let me go like four millimeters because I'll show you how to do the the earrings symmetrical yeah, still got it too not thick enough but it's gonna be okay and now we are going to do the get advantage of the Natasha effect to build a earring so I'm going to separate this in two and it will be kind of similar as close as it can be in a Mokumegane similar but as you can see we have a butterfly wing like effect this one actually needs to be shaved a little it's much thicker than the other one and there we go okay so uh, it's up to you how you want to go with them and I'm going to actually build one in height and one in width So very very gently bring it to the size that you need it to be brought that's why I made them so I cut them so thick and no matter what other color you use you'll get if you do it exactly like I showed you you will get a uh, pretty much the butterfly wing effect But you see now what I was talking about, the, the black becoming almost transparent. And yes, I will do as usual, I will resin before baking so you can see the, the whole effect of it. you can do this with the with these or with um, whatever teardrop you might have let me see if it's long enough 
I prefer these for this type of mokumegane because it is a kind of shaped for it. It's kind of shaped like a wing. Not a butterfly wing, but more like a dragonfly wing. If you want more of the color, you can do the white pearl the same size as the black. And it will do, it will be the, the exact same effect. What in the world? you come from just a little second do the second one and the second one I'm going to do it in width and you'll see the difference the the whole way that the uh, mica particles go and the whole effect will be different. And you can, oops, oh goodness, look what I did. That was a mistake. Guess I didn't push enough, but that's fine. It's going to be just fine. because you can put it back together, that's not a problem. Because I didn't press properly, my hands are tired. And that's the... And the other thing, if you, if you want the, the design to be more vivid, you can actually replace the black with silver this one make sure that it doesn't come apart You're going to do backings on it anyway, so it's going to be fine. Okay, so. And again, they're going to be quite symmetrical and I'm trying to grab this but I don't think I can because I don't have enough I wish there was a smaller one like this a smaller cutter this and if I go like this I like this part but obviously I won't be able to grab it let's see if I go like this it might get it Mariana, 
If you didn't know, Anna also has a beading channel where she shows how to do seed bead stuff and she makes some absolutely fabulous uh, mostly Native American style stuff but they are just great Anna is Celebrate Creations alright so there we go two different butterfly ring style stuff and let me grab the resin I don't know why I put it back for some undisclosed reason I'm going to resin them real quick so you can see the the full effect. And that's why I recommend to do this with uh, pearlescent because you get all these beautiful shining things. And if you want to get to just do a, a slicing one, then remember how I did the double stacking, so stacked, go through pasta machine, cut and stack again, go through pasta machine, just do the, at that point, just shave slice from there, and that's all you need. Now, when talking about uh, colors for this, I did it quite successfully. Um, with other, in the beginning when I was still working on perfecting this, and I will show you, I'll look here in a second for my older photos, so I can show you. You can use Cernit without leaching. Cernit is beautiful for Mokumegane. Remember I was explaining that for Mokumegane, for good Mokumegane results, you need a soft uh, clay because the firmer clays like Pato will not bring the um, adjacent areas down when you do the the, the, the firmer clays are good for sharp stamped mokumegane, not for this kind of stacked mokumegane. And I'm doing resining now, I cannot explain, because I need to do a lot of wild gestures with my hands. But as soon as I'm done resining, I'll explain once again why you want the soft Mokumegane, uh, Mokumegane polymer clay, and um, you also want to look in my on my channel at the playlists. Look in the basic techniques. And I think that's where I added the uh, which clay to pick. That's for. Uh, beginners I need to make another one because in the meantime we got some new lines and some new brands and things are a little bit different than two years ago when I made that that one mm, 
because uh, I explain exactly the, the major lines, the major brands with the major lines and what they are the best for. I got asked at one point why I never do the the lighter thing over the resin to remove the air bubbles well I don't do it because usually I don't get air bubbles <laughs> I don't know I'm just lucky in that okay let me grab this one and get this one Alrighty. And let me refocus. Yeah, we had some stuff going on here yesterday. Today it's better. And I ended up, yesterday, I ended up not having severe storms at the time of the... yellow out my light to make it more daylight like okay so this is more daylight like you can see the different stuff So this one, you can just, afterwards, you can just bake it. And again, before somebody asks, why do you resin before baking and not after? Because the UV resin has the tendency to pull because it's a self-doming. And if you put it on a thin layer of uh, clay, it's going to warp the clay. But uh, it is bakeable without suffering any kind of yellowing or discoloration. So it's just fine to be baked. Okay, so to go back to the Mokumegane thing, when your clay is soft, and let's say you poke, it's not going to bring down where you have, let's say, the toothpick, right? Because it's soft, it's going to pull on all the surrounding clay, so you're going to <clears throat> do a larger type of deformation. <clears throat> while when you have a harder firmer uh, clay it will only bring down where you put down the uh, toothpick okay let's see the other one there you go it almost creates almost like a abalone effect but You can see the combinations and the whole well I'm sorry <laughs> okay so let's get to the next one let me put these here so they can be baked soon let's get to the next one and I'm sorry but I realized I did not have a I did not have blue. I mean, the blue that I had was a, a pearlescent, not a regular. Until right before I started, so I'm gonna need a couple minutes with this. So you'll see now how I usually do my conditioning. I just simply cut this in four.
now and because I'm going to work with a stamp remember when constructing your stamped mokumegane you have to think that whatever is on top is going to be what's going to be imprinted different than a texture where you have an outy texture should I use this or should I let me use this one because it's so I am using this one it's a little bit more so whatever you put on top it's going to be whatever will stay as a pattern on the sheet so what I'm going to do here is grab let me see want to have about this width but only about three quarters of the length because I want the yellow to be my uh, my background we are talking summerish then the second one is going to be white and it's going to be on a more thinnish size This is going to be on a 7 on the pasta machine. And then I'm going to grab the blue. You can use red instead of blue or any other color. That is, or you can use... Um, make a very very light blue instead of the yellow okay so i'm going to get this on the thinnest that i can get it's gonna be either an eight or a nine so i want about this much of it And it's going to go in like this. Oops, Finnegan here. I started closing the door here because now that I, I started turning on the AC, I'm not worried that my uh, clay is going to bake like in winter. I'm going to go with it through the pasta machine first uh, on uh, the one and then on the two. Oh, maybe not, I'm gonna just leave it on a one. I want to make sure that this is well stuck in here. Oh goodness gracious, I have white on my... Where did you come from? I'm gonna be fine. Alright, and then I'm going to grab this and my old 
cosmetic sponge and I'm going to try and give it as good of an imprint as I can my feeble hands can do there we go I did it satisfactorily I really need I am trying to remember to buy another one of these because it's getting old and you know how the sponges when they get old they start getting dusty here on the, on the edges okay and as usual this long blade that you can get at polyclay play or in my influencer store that are that are the most amazing blades for shaving and I'm going to shave off all the blue off of here first and yes you can use these the shapings for something else always always but the better the imprint the better your thing will look like your hands are better than mine hopefully you'll do a better job than what I did <laughs> nevertheless this is a very pretty stamp and you can get very nice uh, images with it because yeah, I didn't print deep enough to get to the yellow so I'm going to do a bit of sophistry I'll show you here in a second what I'm going to do to still get some yellow because uh, theoretically the white is supposed to underline the blue so you're supposed to get some yellow there too I have a very what was the name of that? I can only think of she's not she say though, not she talk, is she bore. Oh, and I'm not talking about the ribbon embroidery she bore. I'm talking about the method of uh, dyeing fabric she she bore. Okay, they are two different things. Okay, now. Let's do a little bit of sophistry to grab some yellow to show here. Going to come from the edges. try something hold on hold on hold on I got an idea because I messed that up so I'm going to try and do something else and grab this other one
Oh my goodness, this is so hard. Let's try this again. This time I want yellows. There we go. Hey, that's not good. Get back in here. And I'm trying not to touch the ones that I already did. And there we go. And I think this is enough. And it came up quite nicely, if I dare to say so. So the next thing is to obviously burnish it. With the wax part done. I have all kinds of stuff on this table, as I said, I'm trying to do like a bazillion things at the same time. Finishing stuff, working on the garden, keeping the house clean, trying to do my exercises. I've been having again um, narcolepsy fits. and. That means I kind of have to go to the doctor, but especially with the latest shootings, I don't know, I'm kind of scared to get out of the house. Honestly, because you don't know anymore where you're going to be safe or not, you know? nice and even so we can go ahead and start creating stuff from it so you can do a pair of earrings and a pendant going to look beautiful and uh, you can actually make several pairs of your earrings and and stuff with this right so as I was saying you can replace and substitute the colors uh, just remember that the base in this case was yellow at the number one you have to press that stamp better than I did number two whatever will be the background it's what pretty much you have to shave to the top layer that has to be the thinnest will be the one that's going to create the pattern in our case it was the blue the second layer 
that is just a tad thicker than the thinnest is the one that's going to underline the pattern and create a secondary pattern if you want because theoretically and let me actually zoom in so because I have a spot here where I got exactly where I wanted <laughs> what I wanted and what was supposed to come out okay so let me zoom in to that exact spot see right here uh, in this area see how you have the white underlying kind of like bordering the blue on the yellow background this is what was supposed to happen and uh, there's some stuff of the same sort right here but essentially what is here is exactly on this petal is what was supposed to happen only that I would wasn't able to press the the stamp enough so you can do it just on with blue on white I mean that is fine or you can use a turquoise instead of the yellow there's all kinds of color combinations that you do but uh, generally speaking if you want to make it sunny and sunshiny use the underlying color as white or a very very bright pastel and if you want to get more uh, shock um, image value but that's not very summery and you can use Oh, I explained before. <laughs> I'll explain it again. Uh, you can use um, um, various combinations of uh, yellow and uh, red or burgundy. My most favorite combination, as you know, is the uh, cadmium yellow with the lizard and crimson. And um, you can do that kind of stuff with black. So let me explain one more time how you shave the best way first of all holding the blade like this is not going to hurt you because you're not pressing with the uh, uh, your thumbs in the blade you, the blade you're just kind of positioning the blade at a certain level you are actually pressing on the blunt side why i'm using my uh, my thumbs like this is to keep the blade at the same um level because once it's fixed it's not as sharp as it might seem um depend it just depends how you use it honestly it just depends how you use it but on this one, if you are afraid that you might get um, a cut, your best solution is to just simply put some band-aid here because you're pretty much never going to cut with the edges of a super flexible thin blade with the, the ends of it. So just put some uh, band-aid here. It might impede a little bit uh, how you're able to position the blade and let me try and show you here so when i'm holding the blade with my thumb i am practically positioning it at a certain distance from the tile so that when i press with my uh, middle finger I'm pressing it this way I'm not pressing with my thumb again I'm just holding with my thumb but it's going to move at the same distance from the tile and that uh, helps with reducing gouging I've seen some artists who practically do just the gouge part that is they bend the blade and do like this I made too many times a lot of gouges so I prefer to do it I do bend sometimes whenever I need to do a spot shaving you saw me that I'm bending a little bit but I'm bending while still holding the blade 
at the same distance using my thumb. So try to exercise this. Your best bet is to just take um, a piece of um, a scrap clay, the mud clay, and put a, a stamp on it and then shave it and see until you learn how excuse me how to do the the whole shaving thing and that's going to help you with the stamped mokumegane and it's going to help you with mica sh the mica shift technique okay i hope you enjoyed it and you liked both things and uh don't forget there is a poll on the community tab on the channel so go ahead and vote there so that I know how to schedule my my regular Sunday stuff. And hopefully if I manage to catch up with this stupid garden, I can start again doing um, pre-recorded videos because it's been crazy. This whole hypothyroid thing is kicking my butt. And my butt is getting bigger. It's like it's out of control. So, thank you so much, and I will see you next Sunday, hopefully at the usual time, 12.30. Hopefully there won't be any more storm frights. Have a wonderful week. See you Sunday. Bye.